that I'll, we'll take in the actual evening because it is 7.33. Um, hello, everyone. We have 111 people with us at the moment watching. So this is a great number. And uh, we hope you enjoy the event. So let's get straight to it. Um, I've got a very complicated technical setup, so just bear with me. Right. So this evening you'll be hearing from five fantastic speakers and have the opportunity to reflect on what's been said through the chat mechanism as well as I see some of you are enjoying at the moment. And in terms of your host, that's me there. I'm N N N N N Ahim, and that's my Twitter handle. And you have um, Abed there as well, who you can see. And that's his Twitter handle, and this is a Stammer event. So I myself, I'm a trustee of Stammer, and Abed is a former a trustee. Uh, so we would like to encourage you to get involved throughout the evening on Twitter as well. Please feel free to tag any of us or to use the ha hashtag ISAD2020 and hashtag find the right words. So please do get involved throughout the evening on Twitter. And so how to take part. Uh, the key thing we'll be using today is chat, but I'll just run you through the interface of what we'll be using today. And if I, so you can see there's a very nice animated picture of me there, not really, but the layout you should be able to see below is you have chat, you have raise hands and you have Q and A. And if you click on the raise hand icon, uh, someone from the team will come to you if you need help. If you click on the Q&A icon, that will open the Q&A window. If you click on the chat window, that will open the chat. And so in order to actually send the messages, it's quite straightforward. Just for the Q&A, type in your questions and click, or, uh, click send or press enter to send. Or for the chat, type your questions and press enter to send as well. Given that we've got a very packed schedule for you this evening, we may not get a chance to actually get to the questions, but please do use the Q&A feature and send in your questions. And what we will do is we will um, um, aggregate all of those questions and we will answer, we'll pass them on to the speakers and we will answer them after the event. And you'll get the answers in the form of a post-event write-up as well. And so let's try this out. So just warm your fingers up. So in the chat, if you could just pop in where you are joining from this evening and please start your answer with A1. So just click on the chat icon to open up the chat window and just type in where you are joining from this evening. And please start your answer with A1. And I'm not even going to try to keep up with the comments because they are already just going far too quickly. But I'm hearing London or London, as someone said. I'm seeing Cheshire, Southampton, Bromley, Northamptonshire, Cambridge, Derbyshire, Cardiff, Hertfordshire, Essex, Midlands, Kidderminster, London again, Michigan and the USA. That's the best one so far. <laughs> I'm, thought, I'm getting tired now. So, But if you want to look at that, you can have a look at the 137 people who are joining us this evening wow. all over the UK and it seems all over the world as well so this is a global event for you this evening and let's so those are still coming in I've got an icon which says I have over a hundred chat messages I'm not going to look okay now also another feature that we'll be using this evening is the polling and just to find out a little more about you, I'm just going to launch a poll at the moment, which will pop up on your screen. And you should be able to see the few questions which are on the screen right now. So please answer. Um, are you a person who stammers, the parent of a person who stammers, friend of a person who stammers, colleague of a person who stammers, speech and language therapist, or none of the above? And I will give you around 30 seconds or so more to do that. This is, this is the quickest I've seen a poll filled out at any digital events. And I've done about 30 in the past six months. Um, this is a record. I'm tempted to take a print screen of this. 
Um, I'm showing my age by calling it a print screen when it's a screenshot now, apparently. So 107 people have voted so far. 81%, I'm gonna give you eight more seconds to do that. And let's see what the results are. You've got one second and I'm going to end the poll and share results. And you can see a significant portion, 51% of people here today are people who stammer, 4% are parents of people who stammer, 19% are friends, 9% are colleagues, and 32% are speech and language therapists, and 7% are have chosen to be just very mysterious instead. So, now, moving on. So, as you may know, this year, Stammer launched the Find the Right Words campaign, and if you haven't seen it already, I'm going to play the video for you right now. Imagine you're 15 and you stammer. You love Ed Sheeran and Emily Blunt. Not that long ago, you were amazed by Lewis Carroll's stories. But according to articles and stories online, these people are plagued by a terrible impediment which they had to get rid of. When all they did was stammer. A physical condition that few of us stop to think about, yet one in 100 people have. So we worked together with the community at Wikipedia and carefully rewrote every bit of language that spoke of it in a damaging or false way. There shouldn't be shame in having a stammer, whether you're 15 or 65. It's how we talk. So hopefully that's not the first time you're seeing that video, but if it is, we hope you enjoyed that video itself. And so the stammer campaign this year, there were 183 Wikipedia entries which were edited to change the language used to talk about stammering. And these entries included people, uh, people such as Emily Blunt, Ed Sheeran, Charles Darwin, Joe Biden, and Tiger Woods. And as you can see from the images on the screen, we removed negative words like overcome, and we replaced them with more positive words like control. On the Lewis Carroll one, you can see the word defect was removed and it was replaced with the word trait. And so we have um, various adverts around the UK at the moment and we'll just show you how they look. And as you can see, it does what I said earlier, it removes the negative word and it replaces it with a uh, more acceptable word in this modern day and for Emily Blunt. You can see Emily Blunt credit to school teacher for helping her to overcome, no control the stammer through acting. And there were also media guidelines which were sent out to uh, the press which contain instructions such as don't use negative words to describe stammering, don't say a person suffers from or is afflicted by a stammer, don't refer to it as a weakness or a defect because stammering is just how we talk. And people don't overcome or defeat or cure their stammer, they manage it. And so we need to change the negative language around stammering because, I'll go to the next slide. The expectation that we must overcome our stammer prevents public acceptance and understanding that we do stammer. So the use of negative language in society has led to a society, an environment where it is seen as unacceptable to stammer. Negative language creates and reinforces negative perceptions, and this then leads to negative experiences for people who stammer. Words themselves shape how we see ourselves, how others see us, and the world that we live in. And really, if you think about your own experience, often what makes it difficult to live with a stammer is the responses, the assumptions, and the lack of understanding and the behaviors of people who don't stammer. The daily responses when people see a stammer are often rude, People think that we're drunk, we're shifty, we're nervous, we're hilarious, or we can't remember our name. And these are all really um, um, unpleasant responses, and they are wrong. And stammering is constantly portrayed negatively in the media as well. It's always made light of, it's made fun of, uh, with um, open all hours being an example. 
people who stammer are seen as lesser than others, when in fact we do not lack intelligence, talent, or ability, nor are we weaker or less able than anyone else. Stammering is seen as something that people should be able to control if only they were nervous or they tried to breathe properly or if they actually focused or if they tried out this cure or thing that someone saw on TV. And people who stammer are expected not to stammer. They are expected to hide it and to find ways of talking fluently and to defeat it and to overcome it and to just get a grip. And so much of the stammering experience and the difficulty of living with the stammer comes as a result of the words used to talk about stammer. And these words shape how we see ourselves, how others see us, and the world that we live in. And the difficulty of living with the stammer comes from trying to be fluent because of that narrow view of what society deems acceptable. And so with this campaign, and what we're saying today, is that it's time that we simply accept that some people stammer. And we really have to challenge the central notion that if you stammer, you should make every effort not to stammer. Stammering is not a weakness, it's not a defect, it's not something to overcome or get rid of. We need to find the right words to create a world where people who stammer can live with dignity and respect. There is nothing wrong with having a stammer, there's nothing wrong with stammering, and it's just how we talk. And that is what our speakers will be musing over this evening. I can see they look... Uh, horrified at the thought. <laughs> Not really, but you know. Okay, so please do feel free to get involved on Twitter throughout as well. As you can see, the hashtag is there. I said 2020. Feel free to tag me, Abed, Amma, and also use the hashtag find the right words. And throughout as well, please feel free to share your thoughts, reflections and comments during the talks as well. Just click on the little chat window you see at the bottom and type in your thoughts, reflections and comments. And with that, that is enough from me and I'm going to hand over to Kelly Brown. Thank you very much. Um, and good evening, everyone. It's absolutely great to be here on International Stammering Awareness Day. Um, I've seen a lot of brilliant coverage, as has been said, as I can see on the chat. I think it's a fantastic campaign that Stamma are doing, and I think it can only serve to help to, to sort of highlight uh, stammering and to build that, that some people talk. I just want to start so just by telling you a little bit about my story. So my first real memory of stammering was I was 11 and I'd just been on a school ski trip and I was asked if I would speak about it in the assembly and so I had a script and I planned it all out and then I stood up in front of the whole school about 100 kids and I completely froze. I couldn't say a word, I couldn't say anything. And that was probably the first time I felt the feelings that a lot of stammerers feel, the feeling of, of shame, uh, the feeling of guilt, the feeling of embarrassment, maybe the feeling of, of why me? Um, but I was lucky on that day because one of the teachers saw that I had a bit of an issue and they were able to able to ask me questions and I was able to to overcome it so in spite of my feelings I think I was lucky that that a teacher and it was it was a few years ago uh, it would have been 27 years ago but they were they were understanding uh, and they were accepting and I know a big part of the campaign is to sort of increase that acceptance throughout uh, throughout society now I was quite fortunate on my way through through school in that I was never bullied. Um, I've always been quite big, you know, which probably helped. And I had an older brother who was also also quite a big guy. So that uh, I would imagine that probably helped me, but uh, I was never bullied. And I also had, had unbelievable, unbelievable teachers. So I used to do the school shows um, and I would sit down with the music teacher and I would go through the script and I would change lines just ever so slightly from, from the actual line to something I would say, 
excuse me, to something I could say. So I change it from if someone says, how are you? And I couldn't say I'm good, we would change it to I'm well. So once again, I was blessed with having a, an incredible teacher, an understanding teacher who was able to really, really help me through that time. And then I just want to fast forward. So, so uh, as you may uh, or may not know, uh, I was a rugby player. I was, uh, I was an international um, and I was fortunate to, enough to captain Scotland. And, um, and I've been playing international rugby for five years. And then I was asked to do a, a television interview and I did it. And it was absolutely dreadful. I was embarrassed. I suddenly, I suddenly, I was back being that that eleven year old child again, being ashamed, feeling guilty, being embarrassed, thinking why me. And I actually called the press officer at the Scottish Rugby Union, and I asked if you could if they could ensure that that interview was never shown. But it was a catalyst for me because it really force me and I know and I know there's been a lot of chat about about sort of about society and non stammerers really accepting accepting stammering as being just something but also on that day it was the day that I understood that that I needed to accept my own stammer and I needed to stop sort of beating beating myself up up about it and thinking I should be perfect and that was a massive catalyst for me because it just took a lot of pressure off uh, a lot of the time as they say stammering is what happens when you try to not stammer <laughs> and it just it, it almost it makes the it makes the problem worse and um, but on that day i actually i actually found a, a bit of freedom and I started to really accept it as a part of me, uh, and I really embraced it. And on that day, also, uh, I made the decision to not let it, uh, to not let it affect me, and to not let it stop me from doing what I ultimately wanted to do. So uh, I, um, I made a decision, and it's not for everyone, but I made a decision to really attack it, and to really and to really try and be in control. Of, of my speech so I did I made the decision at that point that I wanted to be Scotland captain um, and so uh, I really attacked it hard I used probably the sports the sports mentality which again isn't for everyone I'm just sort of giving you a, a few of my experiences here um, and and I really uh, attacked it hard and I really really started to embrace it to accept it and in a funny way to actually to actually like it <laughs> because as i said it's a massive part of me and it's a part of what has made me the person i am today the um as i've mentioned already the big thing i believe is acceptance so accepting it accepting it for for yourself not trying to hide it, not trying to um, not trying to pretend it's not there. It's just really, really, really accepting it. But also for others, just to accept it's how it's how some people speak. And I think the campaigns like this are fantastic because a lot of the negative experiences that a lot of a lot of stammerers feel, I'm sure the listener isn't trying to be mean or isn't trying to actually make you feel uncomfortable or you know quite often isn't isn't actually isn't actually putting you down it's just because they don't understand and they don't understand what's going on and they feel uncomfortable which doesn't really make sense in my mind but that's why i think a campaign like this is fantastic because it gets it out there it raises awareness and it makes it normal it makes it normal and that's why and that's why i think it's a it's a it's a fantastic campaign i'll stop there because i'm conscious of time and because 
Although I do need to say, I think to put a clock on stammerers is incredibly insensitive in its end. I'm only joking about that. But <laughs> it's, so I will stop there. I will stop there, you know, to give the other speakers a bit more time. So there's a bit more leeway now. Um, and thank you very much for listening. Thank you very, very much, Kelly. Uh, even though no one can hear it, can you all just give Kelly a big virtual round of applause, please? A virtual, silent, but extremely loud round of applause there. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Thank you. That was wonderful. Thank you so much. So the next speaker we're going to go on to is Lynn Mackey. Hello. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Lynn, and I am one of the trustees um, um, of Stammer. Um, I'm also a trustee um, for the Scottish Stammering Network. Um, and I work with the International Stuttering Community, which is called um, kind of Stamily. Um, so I've got fingers in many pies. Um, however, like kind of for today, I would like to talk about kind of like the language like around stammering um, and kind of link into this campaign which Stamily is running. But because um, as Kelly just said, I feel it's, it's, it's incredibly important and, and we need to start to like kind of challenge this language which is being used around stammering and like because like if not us um like then who um and we need to start like paving the way and then hopefully like encourage others to join us um in this journey um and i've always believed um that like words have power Um, and how we choose to describe something can be so, so important. Um, and it's easy to see that how the kind of certain words and terms um, kind of can be damaging, like whether like it's calling a stammer like a defect um, or calling, um, or saying someone like is suffering from a stammer or it's, Oh, like it's an issue for them like even if occasionally as people who stammer like and we do feel that stress and that anxiety that like, and because that is not the message we want to be putting out into the world all the time like because that is not all um, and that like of stammering is um, and we don't want to and um, could constantly paint this picture of all of us um are weak and I'm and, and not confident and not competent because that is just not true. Um, however, like another angle at which I think we also need to like, address um, is when people that are trying to be supportive, but however, they don't quite word it like, in a way that's actually helpful um, for us. Um, there's a lot of um, kind of language, which so seems to be like really kind of like supportive on the surface. However, it's it's actually based like in a more like kind of ableist mindset. I'm, I'm talking about stuff like, oh, you were very fluent today, or like, oh, your speech has gotten so much better recently. Um, and I am aware of, and that like a lot of the time like kind of these comments and um, kind of do come like from like a really good place they're trying to buoy us up they're trying to let us know like, kind of, that they think we're doing well um, however like it comes like from this mindset like kind of, where they believe like kind of, um, kind of, that like, we must want to kind of get rid of our stammer And, and like a be fluent and be like kind of quote unquote like normal. And like for me personally, I don't. And at this point in my life, like I'm for the last like kind of decade or so, I have not been trying to be fluent. Like that is not my end goal. And I don't want somebody to meet me, like either hear me talk. And I'm gonna like, give a presentation or have a conversation with me like, and come away. Like, I'm like the best thing they can say about me was, "Oh, she was fluent." 
how boring was I? Like, that's as much as people can take away from a conversation from me. Uh, I want people to think about how passionate I am and um, how like, enthusiastic, how I potentially talk a bit too fast because I get quite excited. And like, that is stuff that I want people to remember. I don't want people to go, oh yeah, she only summered once rather than twice. That, that doesn't matter to me anymore. That's not what I'm going for. And, and this is something and like, which I think is hard to raise with people who don't stammer because they don't and understand and kind of that we wouldn't necessarily want to fix ourselves. And like, because why wouldn't we want to kind of like conform to into this like a perfect image of a speaker and to um, like kind of go on that way that like, we're like we're perfectly fluent and why not? Um, and and like, to that, I just say that I have heard a lot of speakers in my time. I have heard, and I have heard, I'm kind of speakers with a stammer, and who are incredible, who can hold a room, can be entertaining, can make people laugh. I've heard, and I've heard a lot of um, like kind of speakers who don't stammer, who were very very boring, and I didn't want to listen to, but they were fluent. And is that enough? Is it enough to be fluent? I don't think we should be striving for fluency. I think we should be striving um, to kind of get to that point and what kind of where like kind of we can be heard and, and people want to listen to us. Um, and like, kind of my fluency like, kind of fluctuates like, kind of from day to day, from hour to hour, minute to minute. And so, like, for me, like, kind of complimenting like my fluency in a moment is like, like, kind of complimenting something I'm wearing. Like, sure, it's fine, and like, it's nice in the moment, but like, it's gonna go in a minute. It's not a constant thing. And so, like, I'd rather be complimented on stuff I'm actually working on. And so, stuff like my confidence, my eye contact, um, how well I paint myself, am I across? Um, and I do get like I'm very heated about this conversation <laughs> and I'm always happy to talk about this like with anybody um, I'm almost like at the end of my time here today but I just want to say um, if you are like, a friend or a family member of someone who stammers like I'm like kind of, then like I try not to fit say like kind of too much like on their fluency from day to day but I I can promise you that they are already doing that themselves and they are keeping perfect track and um, like they don't need your help and um, I'm kind of to like remind them about like a high fluent hair on that day like just support them just be there for them and please just like kind of listen to them and what because like we are like and what because like at the end of the day like we are the kind of people who stammer and we shouldn't have to pretend and let that we're not. And I'm gonna pass on to the next speaker now. Thank you very much. And thank you for letting me rant for a little bit. <laughs> thank you very much, Lynn. You get another virtual loud, but silent round of applause. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, thank you very, very much to Kelly and Lynn for, the, for their talks and their contribution. So for, please do keep your thoughts, comments and reflections coming in the chat as well. And please also use the hashtags, find the right words, I said 2020 on Twitter as well. And so at this point, we're just going to take a very short time out. And for a few minutes, we're, we're going to give you some time just to reflect on what you have heard so far throughout the event. Just take one minute in silence and think about what you have heard so far. What's resonated with you? What has stood out to you? What's been most interesting? And then when you're ready, open up the chat box and post your thoughts. And please start your response with S1. So what have you, so reflect on what you've heard so far. What has resonated? What stood out to you? What's been most interesting? And pop your thoughts into chat using S1, please. I'll give you about a minute or so in silence to do that.
I'm just going to start uh, giving a running commentary. Uh, not a complete commentary, just a partial commentary. Um, I like that someone said that Dan Ring is my personality and nothing else matters. I like that sentiment. Someone saying they love Lynn's anger. We need more of that in Stan Ring. At society, not at, not at our speech, obviously. Um, a really nice comment from Paul Aston saying that self acceptance is key to having a stamina. If any of the panelists want to jump in on any of the thoughts and reflections as well, just feel free. We're running slightly behind, so uh, we've got a few minutes where you can just jump in if you want to add to the conversation and reflections. Um, yeah, can I respond to one? Hang on, I did. Um, I did see somebody like I'm saying like they were feeling a bit guilty like about complimenting like a colleague's fluent say um one point. Um, and I would say like yeah like bear that in mind when you are talking to people who stammer like however her like, at the same time like and this applies to anything like, about stammering like, everybody like is different. And like so like whether like it's with a colleague. Um, or with a friend or with a family member like if you want to know how they would like to talk about their stammering ask them like, if they're open about their stammer then just say like how would you like me to kind of address this and talk about this like hopefully they'll be open to having that conversation with you i just wanted to say uh, just on one of the comments it was the it was the difference in approaches so as i said i i chose to really attack mine if that's uh, okay it's the wrong word there uh, and just to say it's not a one size fits all yeah. and as Lynn has said there you know the, if there's a young person someone's asked them ask them how they feel start to understand because there's not a one size a one size fits all and the panelists were having a bit of a chat before and everyone had a slightly different experience and so I think it's just key to really speak about it and just open the lines of communication to understand the person um uh yeah and just what they feel about it absolutely um do any of the other panelists want to jump in on anything that they've seen so far or just want to share the reflections so far claire i noticed that you took yourself off mute is that because you wanted yeah to I just felt that I should say something. Um, I just felt like um, ready to rant just like Lynn was, but now I sort of feel like everything that I was going to say has been said actually. Um, oh, no, but, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but all the comments here um, have been great. I mean, it's so refreshing to still be able to talk so openly about stammering and, um, I just think that actually it, it's interesting to um, see uh, from the poll that you did earlier, uh, uh, Naheem, that some of the um, people here don't um, have a stammer or don't uh, will work with people who stammer um, and don't uh, have friends who stammer. So it's really showing that the outreach for this is huge and it isn't just people who stand there it's people beyond that so absolute kudos to, uh, to you guys for that uh, sorry it's me again i just saw a question uh, on the q a about about me uh, being afraid of not being taken seriously uh, as a captain because of my stammer um and the teammates did they challenge me um the answer is no, they didn't challenge me. I think the sport I played to so rugby is an unbelievably uh, accepting sport. Um, we're at times have a bit of a laugh and a joke about it, but it's the same as anyone would would with their mates. Uh, so yeah, I, I was never challenged and it wasn't a fear of mine, um, really because I knew what I was saying. I knew it was right and it wasn't necessarily how I said it 
because I knew the points I was making were the right points. Great. Thank you so much to uh, Kelly and Lynn for the contributions and Claire as well and everyone for popping their thoughts into chat and their questions as well. Please do keep everything coming in. Please keep your comments coming in in the chat. Please keep your questions coming in as well. And so we're going to move on to the next few speakers at the moment. Um, we're also going to say thank you and goodbye to Kelly because now he has to leave very soon. So he gets another silent but loud round of applause again. Thank you very much. Uh, please do get involved on Twitter as well. And I'm, at this point, I'm going to hand over to, to uh, Abbott, who will lead the next section. Hi, um, good evening, like everyone. Um, just as before, can we please continue getting involved? Um, it's great to see that there's a lot of you that are talking in the chat. Um, please make sure that if you are using Twitter to use the hashtag find the right words and please keep your thoughts and reflections and comments coming in the chat box um, during the talks and we are trying our best to um, to respond to them all. So um, the next speaker that we have is Patrick Campbell. Hello everybody. It's really get great to be here. It's a little bit 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 bittersweet to be honest because I can see so many friends popping up in the comments and not to have that sort of cacophony of stammering noise around it is a little bit sad. Um, but it's really great, great to be here and to be talk, talking about language, which is so important and so powerful. And it's really important that we change negative language into neutral. But I just wondered if we could actually create some sort of positive language around stammering and create some new language to help improve our understanding of stammering. Because um, when you look at like um, the movements of the past 30, 40 years, things like Fem, 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 feminism, for instance, they've involved introducing new, 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 new language, things like um, gaslighting and mansplaining. They've not just removed negative language, but they've also introduced positive new words into, 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 into our language. So what I thought I'd do is just try and capture a few words I've seen around, which I think or really good words to help us understand stammering. The first one is stammersplain. You can't read that. That's the wrong way around, isn't it, on the screen? Christ's sake, I spent ages on those. Oh, no. Oh, it, it works. Okay, good. Um, and so stammersplain, this one was created by Nina G. And do you know when someone who does, 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 doesn't stammer suddenly decides to, to lecture you? On, on stammering, even though they've got no, no experience on it of it and give you advice. Um, so one example is when I was growing up, I, 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 I had this friend called Lee and he told me that if I put, put my hands over my ears like this and kept them like that, 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 that then I wouldn't stammer because, because, because I could hear my own voice. Um, and I mean, first of all, it doesn't work. And secondly, you can't really walk around all day like this if Lee didn't realize that. So, 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 so stammer explain is a word I think, I think that we definitely need in the stammering community. The next one is fluent privilege. Uh, this one's by Caitlin Norton. And so fluent, fluent, fluent privilege is what is what is what all of these fluent people get to walk around with every day and experience. The world is built for fluency and people who, who are fluent get to live it um, on a day-to-day -day basis without appreciating the, 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 the difficulties people who stammer face. So hopefully the term fluent privilege will, 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 will help us to sort of capture that experience fluent, fluent people have. Next of all, I've got Stammer Shake, which is one I came up with yesterday. So Stammer Shake is, do you know those really great handshakes you do when you stammer, when you start to like, well, well, well probably not these days anymore, but you know, like this time last year, when you would shake, shake someone's hand and you start 
her, her stammer and you're trapped in that really kind of awkward moment of where you're shaking hands, you're stammering and like, do we, do, we, do we stop shaking hands? Do we keep on shaking hands? Um, so that, that's, the, that's, what, that's what the term stammer shake is, is that sort of unique stammering introduction we all go, go, go through sometimes. Uh, next of all, I've got Stammering Game. This one's by Christopher Constantino. And that is trying to capture um, the things we gain through stammering, the positives of the ex experience. It, came, it comes from the deaf community who have the concept of deaf gain. So the things people gain from being deaf. And sometimes I think we gain some, some things from stammering, things like community and tribe, evenings, like 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 this so there are positives from the stamp stamp stam marine experience and lastly i've got stammering aesthetic um this was made by the icelandic stammering association and um i think i think sadly society thinks stammering is ugly and i think um many people who stammer due to due to self stigma think that stammering is also ugly and bad possibly as well. But um, sometimes in moments of stammering there can be beauty be 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 as well. And um, sometimes I just look at someone who who stammering as they stammer and go, "You're you're one of us. We're part of the same tribe." So. I think by each of us harnessing our stammering aesthetic in um, that moment of stammering, um, we can think about it in more positive ways than the normal um, way we think about stammering. So those are the words I, I had. Just a quick run through again. Stammer spleen, um, fluent privilege. That's a really good, good, good one too. Uh, stammer shake. Stammering gain and stammering aesthetic. Thank you. I would love to hear if some of you have your own words to help us understand the experience of stammering. That would be really cool. Thank you, everybody. Um, thank you very much for sharing that, Patrick. Um, can we all give Patrick a virtual um, um, round of applause? Um, so um, our next speaker is the lovely Claire Norman. Hello everyone. Hi. Uh, thank you very much for coming along uh, this evening. Um, it means a lot to us all that you've actually taken the time out to um, move to your sofas perhaps to log on to um, come and hear us speak this evening. Um, I would like to talk a bit about the uh, 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 language S surrounding stammering, but from the perspective of um, uh, universities. So as you can see on the screen, um, my um, Twitter handle is uh, stuck underscore, underscore UK. So stuck stands for the stammering, the uh, 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 stammers through university consultancy, which is an initiative that I set up uh, back in 2014 when I was at university um, uh, studying French and I was in my final year of my French degree and the French oral exam was worth a large proportion of my final um, grade overall and I just thought this is not going to go well unless I do something about it. Um, all of my lecturers knew that I stammered, but they didn't quite know what to do in that respect. Um, so I went to my uh, university disability services and said, look, I've got a stammer. I have a French oral exam, which is worth a very large proportion of my final year. Um, and can you give me any um, help such as extra time and things like that? And they said, don't panic. Imagine the people who are marking you as and being naked and you'll be absolutely fine. And I thought, great, I'm cured. That's brilliant. Thank you very much. So that obviously raised massive alarm bells to me in that 
uh, uh, university staff don't necessarily know about stammering or if they do know of it then they've obviously been raised uh, some uh, um, kind of myths that link into stammering so i as uh, as uh, so set up stuck uh, uh, in 2014 which is a, um, a, 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 a consultancy whereby I uh, travel to uh, universities all over the country um, to deliver talks to hold seminars and uh, focus groups um, with the aim of um, basically talking to people there who stammer and who work with people there who stammer um, to try to understand what their university is and isn't doing to help them and to um, basically, basically try to fill in those gaps of where the support is lacking. So um, Stuck offers support for not only students but also staff who stammer as well. So um, Stuck currently works with 16 universities all over the UK um, and I should stress that this is something that has taken um, quite a long time to pick up in that I do this in my spare time and a single-handed a long time uh, alongside my uh, a full-time job so progress is quite slow on that front. Um, so I work with uh, uh, 16 universities um, all over the country so uh, normally what I would do is I would book some time off work and I would go to visit these universities and talk to people there and try and understand how I can help. So both from the uh, uh, social aspect of university so being able to um, interact with other students and staff in a, a, a societies and um, uh, events and things like that, but also on the academic side. And that's the side that I want to talk to you about uh, this evening. This is mainly because through the work that I've carried out with universities nationwide, there has been a real lack of uh, empathy towards people who stammer when it comes to university module assessment methods in that if you look at the marking criteria that they offer for certain modules on any course that they offer some of the language that they um, state that they will assess people by can often be quite shocking and given that this is a um, um, course that can often impact the rest uh, of someone's life in terms of <laughs> employability and uh, a career choice can often be detrimental if they don't get the grades that they need. So I did some Googling last night and I've come up with a list of some of my favourite um, quotes from uh, university websites that say how they will assess people's marks basically. So um, basically uh, uh, and given the uh, uh, and Stammer's campaign on language these are some that I would like to um, bring to your attention this evening in that we are sort of told that we have to be fluent and in order to get good grades we have to communicate well, we have to communicate um, fluently, which as we know isn't the case, as uh, Lynn was saying earlier, she's seen um, uh, um, speakers give talks who stammer, who can often be more uh, um, captivating um, speakers than those who don't stammer. So I've seen on some uh, uh, university websites, there was one in particular that I found where they give high grades for a uh, 
and fluency and the way that they uh, describe fluency is the absence of hesitation and word fluffs, which I thought was fantastic, but also the absence of hesitation, that's me doomed, you know, that's, that's, that's uh, most uh, um, stammerers will often hesitate when they're trying to get words out. So that instantly <laughs> implies that actually we aren't capable of being able to talk fluently and therefore we are going to be patronized and, uh, 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 and penalized as a result. I've also um, seen that, that uh, some universities will um, downgrade you for bad eye contact during um, um, and presentations too, which also adds further problems for people who stammer because sometimes they don't like to offer eye contact during conversations. Um, other universities will um, penalise students who um, speak over the given time and constraints. So for my French oral exam, for example, um, I was given half an hour to talk. Um, in the end, I was given 45 minutes because I had to ask for extra time. But if I hadn't um, been someone who stammered and I had gone over that 30 minutes, I would have uh, automatically been uh, uh, and downgraded, which just shows that even though people are trying to make sure that we speak concisely, that's actually alienating those who can't uh, and control the time that they take to say things. And also uh, uh, one of the um, assessment criteria that worried me the most was one that I found where a, a university has said that they will often assess uh, someone's uh, fluency in an oral presentation whereby they have to um, present slides to a class of over 250 people which in itself sounds absolutely horrible but the um, uh, um, um, presentation method that they use is one where the slides move on every 20 seconds and I just thought what is that going to achieve? That isn't going to gain anything, that's going to penalise people incorrectly. And all in all, it's just making sure that people who have a, a, a fluency problems are going to be penalised and aren't going to be able to reach their full potential. So, so uh, this is something that Stuck aims to do, and it's something that I'm working with universities nationwide to try to change really just to make sure that people who do stammer are able to reach their full potential uh, on their university courses. Um, so that's just something that I thought that I'd bring to the table. Um, obviously as uh, Naheem and Abed have said, um, uh, um, please keep your questions coming in and uh, uh, f uh, feel free to tweet me or to ask me any questions but that's all from me so thank you very much for listening um thank you so much um for sharing your pre your presentation claire um can we all give claire a virtual um round of applause and show your appreciation um in the chat um our next and final speaker is uh, musharraf from uh, medicate in yorkshire Hi guys, so my name is Mushraf Asghar and I was actually on a TV show a couple of years ago called Educating Yorkshire. Now, my journey in finding my voice actually, it really started quite a long time ago. Uh, and I'd say I was m maybe around the age of five. And it was at a point where I unfortunately suffered from an asthma, a, 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 an asthma a, 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 
um, an asthma attack. And I feel like growing up, I was in a situation where I was basically learning to overcome something which I had. And it was always something I would hear uh, um, as a young kid that I would overcome this um, this speaking problem which I had and everything would be okay. But unfortunately, that wasn't the case at all. And I do basically believe that actually accepting who I was as a person was the most important thing that I could actually take on in life. And one of the biggest things that I faced um, at the age of 16 was being part of educating Yorkshire. And it was really tough because the moment it actually aired, a lot of people felt as if I was a fluent speaker. And unfortunately, that wasn't the case. Well, I say unfortunate because of how it made me feel. Because I felt as if that I had to explain to every single person that this stammering problem that I had wasn't something I overcame. And I hated to explain to people that this is what stammering was. And how come I always had to explain that it was something that I would have to live with? And it was just something that I just really wanted people to just accept the moment I, I was able to get my words out. And it just basically changed my conception on being on TV because it wasn't about my former English teacher allowing me to overcome this stammer I had, but accepting who I was as a person. And it's one of the most important things that I feel about stammering is it's about accepting who you are and the moment you actually accept who you are as a person then I feel the weight of being a stammerer or being caught out is really taken away and it is something that I seem to talk quite regularly about because at university, I'm actually studying journalism, and it's 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 a course which requires you to speak quite often. Um, you're handling um, interviews, and you're speaking to um, different people, and it is quite hard, but if I was to label myself as someone that was wanting to overcome this stammering problem or well, this, this stammer that I have, then it would be really hard because I really do feel that once you actually accept who you are, whether you, you're a kid that has a speaking problem or an adult or a family member who has who, who knows someone who has a speaking problem or whatever you actually want to give it, a, a, well, whatever you want to actually call it, it's the moment that person learns to accept who they are and it's perfectly okay. Like... Uh, uh, I say this from experience of not only being on TV or anything like that at all. It's just the experience that I've had about accepting 
who I am as a person has allowed me to go out and achieve whatever I wanted to achieve and and host one last thing is a massive thank you to like to every single person who has actually listened um it, it's it's not something i felt that like uh, a conversation about stammering was something that we would uh, we would need to really to talk more about mm-hmm. because I really do feel that people need to start accepting people like us who actually do have a uh, and that is and that is pretty much it if you have um any questions at all then yeah feel free to ask me on my social media or if you do want to obviously um, ask any questions and feel free to ask them um thank you so much for your talk uh musharraf um can we all please give uh, musharraf a virtual um round of applause and please show your appreciation um in the chat please Okay, uh, I just w- want to say again, thank you so much to Patrick, uh, Claire, and uh, Mushi again for your contribution. Um, can we give all of our speakers another big yet silent virtual round of applause? Okay, guys. So we're going to go for another for another short time out now for a few minutes, um, or to give you some time to reflect on what you have heard so far. Um, so can we please take um, one minute, of course, in, sus- in silence and think about what you have heard so far, what has resonated with you uh, uh, the most, um, what has stood out to you, and then when ready, please um, put your messages in the chat box and post your thoughts. And please, if you could start your responses with S2. So I'll give you all a minute. Okay, and so I'm just gonna read some comments. Um, thank you to Paul, he said, um, this is such a great event. Um, um, a person, uh, Kate, was interested to hear about uh, Musharraf's experience of being on TV and how his story became twisted to fit the uh, narrative, which is true. Um, we've got one from Shazia that says, um, acceptance is the key. Um, someone said that the desperate thing of more new positive stammer words we need a hashtag to collate them all um i think another person said um they're very impressed with the speakers who didn't hold back that is very very true um someone has commented for you uh, musharraf saying that they loved your message um many wonderful experiences um shared and a lot to learn from um, and this is the last one that I'll read. Um, as someone who doesn't stammer, face friends with someone who does, um, I don't think I've ever given real thought to the fact that it's not it's not a level playing field when it comes to speaking in exams. So, uh, my mind went straight to written exams, just like GCSEs. Um, so what I will do now is um, I will hand over to uh, Nahim. Uh, but thank you for that. Uh, everyone, if you could please keep your responses uh, coming in the chat and also keep your questions coming in as well. So we're going to move on to the next part of the event. Time is against us, so we have about 21 minutes left or so. So I'm going to go to the next slide and say, so in this part of the event, we're going to think about the future and how we can make it 
out of the people who stammer. And earlier we said that we want public acceptance and understanding that we do stammer. So how do we actually make this happen? How do we attain public acceptance and understanding of the fact that we stammer? So we're just going to run through a few questions. Just as before, we're going to ask you to pop your thoughts into chat and we'll run through those. And we'll spend about a few minutes on each question. So the first question is why hasn't this happened already? So we want public acceptance and understanding that we stammer, but why doesn't this happen already? So please have a think and pop your thoughts into the chat and start your answer with N1. So we want public acceptance and understanding that we do stammer, but why doesn't this happen already? Start your response with N1. We've got a few uh, comments coming in already, blaming the media, which is uh, great. Just to just get that in there early which I like to see. Um, so the media are hugely to blame. People who stammer on TV and films and dramas where their stammer isn't part of the dramatic device, it's just how they speak. Yeah. That's definitely something that is aspirational and, and a place where we want to get to, definitely. People are saying lack of knowledge and awareness for mostly media, not enough representation in the media so it seems strange to hear it people are not educated about it again poor media representation so a big theme coming through at the moment is how stammering is portrayed in the media or how it's not portrayed how people are excluded from the media itself and voices like like ours are not represented in the media that we see out in the world It's not spoken about enough. Someone said that stammering, stammering usually shocks the person in, in front of us due, due to them having a thought of a fluent you in their minds. I agree with that because if you think about how people go about the world, they, they expect fluency from people. And when you don't provide that, it's jarring in that little moment where you're, well, the reality of the situation doesn't meet with your expectations. And so again, another aspiration is for us to be able to make it so that people are okay and not jarred by having to listen to a person who stammers as well. Someone said because it wasn't dealt with at school, the world has based its judgments around normality and until recently it hasn't celebrated diversity in whatever form it takes. So uh, any of the panelists, just feel free to jump in as well at any point, uh, share your reflections on this question and of anything that you've seen in the chat as well. Um, and that's mainly because I've realized the futility of trying to keep up with the chat in this moment. There are 50 messages which I can't get through. So please, just go for it. I would just say that like with, um many topics that are um, considered to be um, taboo in today's society, even though we have come a, a long, long way. Um, uh, uh, there is still a uh, long, long way to go. So um, uh, um, people often tell me that if they stammered, um, back in the 1930s or the 40s, and they would have been um, caned at school, um, just in the thinking that it would have it, um, have the stammer beaten out of them, you know? So even though now that that uh, definitely wouldn't happen, even though we have come a long, long way, we still have a uh, long, long way to go, but it's uh, and through, um, events uh, such as this and through uh, organizations such as um, Stammer that can help to spread the word and to basically um, uh, and debunk all of the myths that have been uh, created by uh, 
society and the media and things like that. So it's a joint effort, definitely. But I think we will get there. But obviously the task to change the uh, society's view of something is not easy. <laughs> so. I mean, I would also like to add in, um, like, obviously, we'd love people to, and like to kind of be more aware and to like kind of know the things. Like, however, for like for like a lot of people, it's not like malice or wanting to like exclude or hurt us. Like, it's genuinely like they don't know enough enough about stammering. Like, they don't understand the feeling. Like, Extent of it, like, and also they don't know how to respond to it when it does come up as well. Like if it's one to one, um, I'd like to, um, I'd like to kind of tie this back to one of the questions which was in the Q and A, and um, which I answered, and um, which was like, what do you do like if you're speaking to somebody like who looks uncomfortable like with the fact you're stammering? Um, and to that, like, I will say like there will be some people like who are surprised or uncomfortable or not sure what to do the first time and that they're face to face with someone with the stammer. And that's not a reflection on you. Like that's not like because like you're doing anything wrong or there's anything wrong with your speech. Like however, they genuinely don't know what to do. Um, and in those cases, like if you're both comfortable, I would have that conversation and let them know like and what you would like them to do, whether you would like them to keep eye contact um, like something which a lot of people like to do, like when I stammer, is look up at the ceiling, like that's going to help. And um, we can let them know if that's not useful for you. Um, and all of that, have that conversation. Um, like because, and like because like kind of fluent people don't understand what it's like to stammer. Um, however, we can talk to them and we can educate them. And if they're good people, then they should be open to learning that. Absolutely. Thank you. What, what I was just going to, Add is that I think society just has a tendency to other any sort of my, my, my minority group and the stammerers we aren't the only group who are subject to great prejudice and stigma in the world and I think we have to look out there and learn from other rights rights right rights movements and how they have tried to tackle and change prejudice and just discrimination. And I think in particular, people have written a lot about media portrayals in the past. And I think that's so true. Having positive role models and rep representation is really critical to changing how we all think about stamps, stamp, stamp, stammering. Absolutely. Thank you very much to the panelists and for everyone who's dropped in their comments so far. Please keep your comments coming in. And we're going to go to the next question. So we want public acceptance and understanding that we do stammer. So what are the barriers that will stop this from happening? So have a think and just drop your thoughts into the chat. So we want public acceptance and understanding that we do stammer. What are the barriers that will stop this from happening? And please start your answer with N2 this time. And for the reason we've got these weird little uh, letter number combinations before every question is so that we can separate out the chat after the event and include it uh, in the write up as well. It just makes it easier to go through. So we want public acceptance and understanding that we do stammer. What are the barriers that will stop this from happening? Start your answer with N2, please. And as before, panelists, just feel free to jump in on anything that you see. Um, we'll jump to the next question at about 52, 53. So we've got about four or five minutes on this question. Somebody's just um, commented that the world is built with time, time constraints on everyday, everyday events. And I guess I would just say that um, those constraints are made by society. They're imposed upon people who stammer in their things. We can look to cha cha challenge people who 
are physically disabled and need, need a wheelchair have worked really hard over the past 30 to 40 years to ensure there's ramp access to buildings and accessibility. So I don't think, um, I think the time constraints are something which can be challenged and changed. And yeah, and on that note as well, I'm seeing a lot of people saying um, that we live in a very like a fast paced world. Now people don't have as much patience. Um, and I think it is true that people are very uncomfortable with silence. Um, and people, if they're faced with silence, like they feel like they need to interject and they need to carry on the conversation. And I think again, like as Patrick said, it's about challenging that. Um, and it, it and then it's about like if you are speaking and somebody cuts over you, just go, mm, I'm sorry, like my still moving, I'm not done. <laughs> I'm bringing that. Back. Like, and I think like when you do it, people are immediately like, oh my God, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. And like, again, it's just because people are so um, like wanting to keep going and keep going. And people um, are now uncomfortable with any kind of delay. Um, however, I would like to challenge that more. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I would find that um, because in the world of work, I. I spend um, most of my days in um, uh, online calls with um, colleagues and things like that. And I would say that my stammer very much varies depending on who I'm talking to in that meeting. Because if, the, if uh, 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 there are some people who may not necessarily know about my stammer or they may not understand it. So if I just suddenly stop talking people may think that my signal's gone crap or they may think that I just don't know what to say um, but on the whole everyone um, can see that I'm physically struggling to talk so, so they know and to not do anything but there are some people I think who uh, and just have that mentality to, of just having to get things done, like bam, 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 everything has to be done really, really fast. So if you can't say your point in the next 10 seconds, then you're done. Absolutely. And I agree. So with the, um, with the people asking on video calls, I tried to make a joke about it at the beginning, but not in a, but not in a way that's harmful or makes light of the stammering itself, because I'm, a healthcare consultant so I do big events with um, people who I don't know and I always assume that they think that their internet is dropped out or something that I stand on. and so I just make reference to that and that's my one joke which I reuse at the beginning of every meeting but it just it diffuses the whole situation instantly I find because people can Again, I think it goes back to the expectation thing and that people know what's going on this time. Oh, it's not like, oh, they're not panicking because somebody's internet stopped. Oh, he's just stammering. So it's fine. And they just tend to relax and I can physically see them just relax sometimes. Sometimes they like, like just what's going on? It's been trying to get out. And when you say, oh, I stammer and you make a joke about it, then oh, okay, yeah. And then they're fine and they just treat you like a normal person. Yeah, absolutely. I would say that I only really started to take the mickey out of my own stammer in the last couple of years or so. But since I've actually started doing that, it's definitely helped me in a, a, a social situations. But if anyone else made a joke about my stammer, I would punch them in the face. But... Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Thank you. They were just clapping in the background. It's great. Um, um, but uh, I understand that some people aren't in the in the um, uh, uh, headspace, or uh, uh, that uh, they don't feel uh, within themselves that they can uh, uh, and joke about it. So. I understand that you have to reach a, a certain level of being comfortable uh, uh, with your own stammer to be able uh, 
uh, to do that. Um, yeah, I would definitely agree with that, especially with the whole, like, we're allowed to make fun of... Uh, and like to make fun of our speech, like, and our stammer. Um, but, like, you're not... It's the same as, like, if you've got, like, a younger sibling. Like, you can take the mick out of them all you want, but, like, if anyone else tries it, then no. Um, and I think that's true, like, I'm both terms of making fun of it and a lot of other stuff as well and and the thing um that there's a real um kind of thing around like an if um i think like kind of making that joke about it at the start of a presentation or something like that it just kind of sets it up as oh like although oh like it's not an issue for them and, and now i know what it is so like i'm not going to worry about it either um, and I've had to like, adapt um, like my little like, kind of disclaimer like, for Zoom calls. And so like it's, and so like it's now like kind of just to let you know like, I do have a stammer like so like I might cut out uh, like sometimes like it, I'm, and I can't like kind of tell you whether it's going to be the internet or whether it's going to be me, but just bear with me. <laughs> so we're, we're going to jump on to the next question now. This is the very last question. So we want public acceptance and understanding that we do stammer. So simply, what do we have to do to make this happen? I say simply like this, like it's easy, but you know, uh, start your answer with N3, please. I, I've got a fairly simple answer to this one, Nahim, actually, which is, which is just stammer. I mean, you know, it's probably the most mad idea anybody's, anybody's ever heard, but I think just, um, just public rep rep representation and people who stammer living everyday lives stammering is a very brave revolutionary act like um christopher constantino i've got i've, I've got the term he uses but he calls it like fighting back against the world like sort of just a single act of stammering is sort of like a cultural revolution around you just to put stammering into the world is itself so even just even just allowing yourself to stammer is on just like a day-to-day -day basis is a, is a, is a, is a really crucial part 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 of this absolutely um yeah and i don't think we're kind of we that as people who stammer like realize how much of an impact we can have just by being ourselves and just going out and being honest um about our stammers it's like i've got um, I, I've got like kind of somebody that like, I used to live with. Um, was in a meeting with somebody, like, and she noticed um like, that like he had a stammer. Um, like, and when he blocked in the meeting, like she just let him talk. Um, and then at the end of the meeting, like he came up to her, like and he said, "Thank you." I'm like, "Thank you for being patient. Thank you for giving me that time." Um, and she was like, "Oh, like, I didn't even think about it. I used to live with someone with a stammer, um, like, and I knew that that was what her preference was, so I did that." Um, and like, so like the very act of knowing me um, and me being open about my stammer and talking to her about my stammer, like it meant that she was able to help out someone else down the road. Um, and that's why we need to be open. Like kind of those of us like, who like, are able to, that like, we need to be open. We need to be talking about it. Like, because then we're also helping like, everybody who isn't able to take that step yet, like, isn't ready to take that step like um like nobody should have to be the advocate and have to stand up but however those of us who can absolutely should absolutely thank you very much please do keep your answers to this question coming in so we want public acceptance and understanding that we do stammer what do we have to do to make this happen please start your answer with n3 i'm going to move on so we can finish uh, on time hopefully I'm going to launch a very quick poll for you now, if I can figure out the technology. Okay. So this is just a very quick evaluation poll. So thank you very much for your participation, participation today. Please just take 30 seconds to give us your responses so we can ensure that we can make future events even better. And of course, engage with us on social media as well and on Twitter 
and you will also receive uh, an evaluation survey via email and in your browser once this event ends as well. So if you could just please take 30 seconds to fill that out very quickly, please. Okay, just give you about 10 more seconds to fill out the feedback poll and please also fill out the evaluation survey after this event as well which should appear in your browser. I'll give you just five more seconds and I'm going to close it now. And so as you can see a lot of people have really enjoyed this event, uh, are really glad about that they would recommend this event they found it interesting and informative 25% um, strongly agree and 45% agree that this event has changed how they think about stammering and people also agreeing that they will use what they have learned from this event in the future as well so that's absolutely excellent feedback I think and thank you very much to all of the panelists and the speakers and to all of you for engaging with this event as well. And so I'm going to just finish by talking about the impact that the Find the Right Words campaign has had. So we have had a tremendous response to the Find the Right Words campaign. Um, as you can see on the screen here, so the Scribius Tips video has been viewed almost 40,000 times. We, we've had over 1,500 outdoor ads across the UK. Twitter impressions are up 632% in comparison to last month. Web tra traffic is up 42%. Editorial guidelines have been downloaded 383 times, and the campaign went out across USA, Canada, Australia, and Ireland as well. Wikimedia UK have also endorsed this campaign and have said that they will use what they've learned from this to guide their work going forward as well and you can see uh, a, a really excellent quote on the screen there from Wikimedia and so we're really starting to see and feel the landscape shifting and we're really at the beginning of a journey of making a real difference to how people view think about react to and portray stammering and as a result of this creating a better society for people who stammer so thank you very much for coming to our event tonight and we hope you found it interesting and useful and obviously a big thank you to all of our speakers. Uh, let's just give them another very big uh, roaring but silent as well round of applause. So please join me. Uh, yeah, and I bet you can do better than I did where I started the applause and did it for two seconds and then stopped. Yeah, so please continue. And please drop your thoughts into the chat and the Q&A as well, and we will get to you soon. And we'll just leave you with a final thought that we hope you, from all of this, you can see that there is nothing wrong with being as we are. And there is nothing wrong with having a stammer, and there's nothing wrong with stammering itself. We just stammer, and it's how we talk. So thank you very much, everyone, and have a lovely evening.